there, whoever you are, and wherever you are on life's journey. You are welcome here. Please join me in the call to worship. Come, let us dwell in God's shelter. Let us dwell in God's creation. Come, because the earth is the Lord's, and God's earth is our home. We live in God's world. We are not alone. We share this life with the heavens and the earth, with the waters and the land, with trees and grasses, with fish, birds, and animals, with minerals and creatures of every form, and with all our brothers and sisters. God is good. And everything God makes is good. God is love, and everything God makes is love's fruit. Let us worship God. Our first song is More Waters Rising, and the words are on the screen.
My friends, know that you are a creature of a loving God. Live in the faith that all things are eternally recreated. Amen. And so we wanted to get 
the earth back to the way God made it and get this garbage out there. Yeah, I said, sister, right. That's right. You got it? We want to get rid of it. So during Sunday school today, or during Joyful Path, you all will be decorating bags to make them have a message, save the earth. And then we'll be giving these bags to people who need a bag to go shopping so that they can shop and not use those disgusting plastic bags. And so now we're going to sing a little song about this. And
with a prayer of illumination. You are the living God who sustains all life in continually unfolding ways. And now may we open our ears to your continually unfolding word. You speak to us in new, in vital, and in imperative ways. With all the power you have given us, let us be silent and open to listening for nourishment, comfort, for challenge, and new focus. Amen. Our first reading is from Genesis chapter 2, verses 4b to 15. When the Lord God made the universe, there were no plants on the earth and no seeds had sprouted because he had not sent any rain and there was no one to cultivate the land. But water would come up from beneath the surface and water the ground. Then the Lord God took some soil from the ground and formed a man out of it. He breathed life-giving breath into his nostrils and the man began to live. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and there he put the man he had formed. He made all kinds of beautiful trees grow there and produce good fruit. In the middle of the garden stood the tree that gives life and the tree that gives knowledge of what is good and what is bad. A stream flowed in Eden and watered the garden. Beyond Eden it divided into four rivers. The first river is the Pishon. It flows around the country of Havilah. Pure gold is found there, and also rare perfume and precious stone. The second river is the Gihon. It flows around the country of Cush. The third river is the Tigris, which flows east of Assyria, and the fourth river is the Euphrates. Even birds and animals have much they could teach you. Ask the creatures of earth and sea for their wisdom. All of them know that the Lord's hand made them. It is God who directs the lives of his creatures. Every man's life is in his power. For those of you who know the speech uh, of Chief Seattle, um, I, I want you to know that I took some liberties. As I was doing the research on this speech, I found that there were several versions of it. And obviously, it was an oral speech when it was given, and people have gathered up those oral bits and put them together. So I took some liberties, but mainly in uh, terms of rearranging paragraphs and sentences. So if you have know, know the speech, that's uh, why it may not uh, work the same way. The president in Washington sends word that he wishes to buy our land. How can you buy them and sell the sky, the warmth of the land? The idea is strange to us. If we do not own the freshness of the air and the sparkle of the water, how can you buy them? Every part of this earth is sacred to my people. Every shining pine needle, every sandy shore, every mist in the dark woods, Every clearing and humming insect is holy to the memory and experience of my people. The sap which courses through the trees carries the memories of the red man. We are part of the earth, and it is part of us. The perfumed flowers are our sisters. The deer, the horse, the great eagle, these are our brothers. The rocky crest, the juices in the meadows, the body heat of pony and man all belong to the same family. So when the, God, the great chief in Washington sends word that he wishes to buy our land, he asks much of us. The great chief sends word he will reserve a place so that we can live comfortably to ourselves. He will be our father and we will be his children. We love this earth as a newborn loves its mother's heartbeat. So if we sell you our land, love it as we have loved it. 
care for it as we have cared for it. Hold in your memory the land as it was when you received it. Preserve the land for all children and love it as God loves us all. As we are part of the land, you too are part of the land. As the earth is precious to us, so it is precious to you. We know that the white man does not understand our ways. One portion of land is the same to him as the next. For he is a stranger who comes in the night and takes from the land whatever he needs. The earth is not his brother, but his enemy. And when he has conquered it, he moves on. He leaves his father's grave behind, and he does not care. He kidnaps the earth from his children, and he does not care. His father's grave and his children's birthright are forgotten. He treats his mother, the earth, and his brother, the sky, as things to be bought, plundered, sold like sheep for bright beans. His appetite will devour the earth and leave behind only a desert. You must teach your children that the ground beneath their feet is the ashes of our grandfathers, so that they will respect the land. Tell your children that the earth is rich with the lives of our kin. Teach your children that we have taught our children that the earth is our mother. Whatever befalls the earth, befalls the son of men. If men spit upon the ground, they spit upon themselves. We ourselves share much with the earth. We share genes. We share elements such as water and carbon. We are made of star stuff as surely as the earth is. Yet we continually forget this and assert our position of dominion and control. We insist on using the earth for our own purposes, and we do not give back to it. We cover the soil with concrete so we can park our cars conveniently. We dig ditches and canals and build dams and levees for our commercial purposes. We exploit the earth, its minerals, resources, even the soil. I don't believe we are purposefully greedy Yet we participate in a system of consumption that means we must misuse what is freely given. Taking into account all the productive land it takes to support our consumption, we use an average of 30 acres per person. While a person living in Bangladesh survives off one half acre. So we will consider your offer to buy our land, but it won't be easy. For this land is sacred to us. The shining water that moves in the streams and rivers is not just water, but the blood of our ancestors. If we sell you the land, you must remember it is sacred. And you must teach your children that it is sacred, and that each ghostly reflection in the clear water of the lakes tells of events and memories in the life of my people. The water's murmurs is the voice of my father's father. The rivers are our brothers, they quench our thirst. The rivers carry our canoes, feed our children. If we sell you our land, you must remember and teach your children that the rivers are our brothers and yours. You must henceforth give the rivers the kindness you would give any brother. And waters are also to be exploited. We turn on our faucets and water rushed forth without our thinking about how precious it is. We do not give thanks. We do not give back kindness. We drain our waste and our agricultural ran runoff into rivers and lakes and oceans so that we have algae blooms and dead zones in our waters. I do not know. Our ways are different from your ways. The sight of your cities pains the eye of the red man. There is no quiet place 
in the white man's cities. No place to hear the unfurling of leaves in the spring, or the rustle of the insect's wings. The clatter only seems to insult the ears. And what is there to life if man cannot hear the lonely cry of the whippoorwill or the arguments of frogs around the pond at night? I am a red man and do not understand. The Indian prefers the soft sound of the wind darting over the face of a pond and the smell of the wind itself, cleaned by a midday rain or the stented pine, pinion pine. The air is precious to the red man for all things. All things share the same breath. The beast, the tree, the man, they all share the same breath. But if we sell you our land, you must remember that the air is precious to us and that the air shares its spirit with all life it supports. The wind that gave our grandfather his first breath receives his last sigh. If we sell you our land, you must keep it apart and sacred as a place where even the white man can go to taste the wind and is sweetened by the meadow's flowers. We have polluted the air with as much ease as we polluted the earth. We have filled our skies with smog. Our children have asthma and other breathing conditions because we pour our waste into the air, which at one time seemed unlimited, a resource that we could use without care or cost. We have pumped billions of tons of carbon dioxide and methane into the air in order to maintain our lifestyle. Our consumption is a means of sustaining our economy. We are persuaded that we deserve this consuming life, that it is our due, and we do not count the cost to ourselves or to the world. So we will consider your offer to buy our land if we decide to accept. I will make one condition. The white man must treat the beasts of this land as his brothers. I am a savage and do not understand any other way. I have seen a thousand rotting buffaloes on the prairie, left by the white man who shot them from a passing train. I am a savage and do not understand how the smoking iron horse can be made more important than the buffalo that we kill only to stay alive. What is man without the beast? If all the beasts were gone, man would die from a great loneliness of the spirit. For whatever happens to the beast soon happens to man. All things are connected. We are in the midst of a sixth great extinction. We have deprived the animals we share with the earth in their habitats. We have moved into their province and insisted that they didn't belong, like deer in our gardens or wolves in the wilderness. We drive to extinction the insects that we depend on for our fruits and flowers. The abundant aquatic life of the ocean is being depleted. We are destroying the great forests of the Amazon and the South Asian tropic which are home to teeming life in order to produce meat. We have cre created the condition for a significant loss of biodiversity on which we all and all of our beings depend. All things are connected. This we know. The earth does not belong to man. Man belongs to the earth. This we know, all things are connected, like the blood which unites one family. All things are connected. Even the white man whose God walks and talks with him as friend to friend cannot be exempt from the common destiny. We may be brothers after all, we shall see. One thing which we know, which the white man may one day discover, our God is the same God. You may think now that you own him, as you wish to own our land, but 
but you cannot. He is the God of man, and his compassion is equal for the red man and the white. The earth is precious to him, and to harm the earth is to heap contempt on its creator. The whites too shall pass, perhaps sooner than all other tribes. Contaminate your bed, and you'll one night suffocate in your own waste. But in your persistent per but your in your perishing you will shine brightly fired by the strength of the God who brought you into this land and for some special purpose gave you dominion over this land and over the red man. We must remember the sacredness of the earth, of the land and the waters and the air, and hold them precious. We must become aware of our unconscious use of God's abundant gifts, to not simply consume them, but learn to use them carefully, to join our spirits with the spirit of the water and the air and the trees and the soils. Otherwise, it will be the beginning of survival. That destiny is a mystery to us. What will happen when all the buffalo are slaughtered? The wild horses tamed? What will happen when the secret corners of the forest are heavy with the scent of men, many men, and the view of ripe hills is blotted by talking wires? And what is to say goodbye to the swift pun pony? And the hunt. Where is the thicket? Gone. Where is the eagle? Gone. The end of living and the beginning of survival.
and our prayers for all of us in different ways. Almighty God, as we gather here this day to share our joys and our concerns, we ask you to be with the people that we have raised up to you. We ask you to be with all people who faith as they gather together to help them give praise to God and not be in fear. We ask you to be with those who are recovering from surgery and those who are facing surgery. We give thanks for the time when we can come together and renew our concern for this earth and that we can act in ways to begin to save it and enable it. We give thanks for all the people in this church who have enabled that to happen. Lord, our faith and strength is in you. We ask you to hear our prayers and to bless us and be with us and bless those that we've raised up to you. And now strengthen us all together as we say this prayer from the New Zealand Book of Prayers. Eternal Spirit, God of anger, any ever, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, loving God and whom it is heaven, the hallowing of your name echoes to the universe, the way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the herbs we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From the trial to the grave to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For your reign and glory of the power that is love, now and forever.
our home. Bless what we return to your church this morning as well as electronically. May it work for this community and for your kingdom on earth. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God, who gives us the Holy Spirit. 